We are together again on the radio. This is what's called firing the first shot. You know what firing the first shot is? I'm going to fire the first shot. And in firing the first shot, I'm not going to tell you the names of any of the people I'm talking about. I'm not going to give you anything too specific that would identify anybody. But I am going to tell you about uh, a situation developing that I don't know if uh, the rest of the country has had this problem. And if you're listening to the rest of the country, you might find this interesting only because maybe it's never happened where you live. But it happens where I live. Let me tell you what it is. Many of you know that for the past 11 years, I've lived in a home in the Hollywood Hills that I absolutely love. I love the street where I live. I love the view of the city that I have. I love the convenience. From where I live, you can get to anywhere in a minimum amount of time. And in L.A., that's saying something. For example... From my front door to the door of this studio is 15 minutes. No freeways, no traffic jams, 15 minutes door to door. It's great, right? Yet, uh, there's no airplanes flying overhead. Somehow I've stayed out of the flight paths, being in the Hollywood Hills, where I am. There's no freeways nearby. And um, I have had ten and a half of the most wonderful years you can possibly imagine living on my wonderful street. My home is a love letter to Hollywood, to old Hollywood, to Los Angeles. I love living here. And I put my money where my mouth is. I bought my house for less than three quarters of a million dollars. And I know if you live in Dallas, you think, my God, that's a palace, but people who live in L.A. know better. And I did about a $2 million renovation on my home. Because, as I've told everybody, I'll never move. That's how much I love it here. People love to take shots at Los Angeles. They love to take shots at Hollywood, even though they don't know what Hollywood is or where it is. You know, Hollywood has become a a synonym for the entertainment industry, when in reality, uh, most of the movie studios have moved to places like Burbank or Culver City. People still refer to Hollywood generically as the entertainment industry. And yet, uh, many things have happened in Hollywood over the years. It's undergone many, many, many metamorphoses over the years. I'm enthralled with the history of Hollywood and the Hollywood Hills. I am fascinated with the lost history of Los Angeles. Many people don't know anything about the history of L.A. Do you know there were once trolley cars in L.A.? Do you know there was once a little Italy near downtown? Seriously. I mean, there's all kinds of hidden things about Los Angeles that are just fascinating. Where Television City stands today, CBS Television City, do you know there was a baseball stadium? And a team called the Hollywood Stars used to play there? These are little things, but I love where I live. Love the city, I love the Hollywood Hills. I can't tell you how emotional I get about it. But the people who visited my home, they know. When I redid my home, my home was built in 1925. And I hired someone to research what homes like mine might have looked like in 1925. And I renovated my home to take it back to its original concept. Darkwood floors. Cherry baseboard moldings, arched doorways, arched windows, mosaic tile, wrought iron. I mean, I have stood on my head trying to figure out 
what this place might have looked like in 1925, and I spared no expense because I believe in L.A. and I believe in the Hollywood Hills. I love it. A couple of years ago, a public figure, who I won't name at this time, all I will say to you is that you will see him on the Academy Awards broadcast. He uh, bought the home across the street from me, and he proceeded to do a an even bigger renovation than mine. I think he wants to spend twice what I spent. For two years, when I opened my front door, I was looking at a dumpster and one of these Andy Gump porta potties, which was rarely serviced, and the stench of stale urine used to waft down my block. But I said to myself, you know, I did my renovation here, and although we didn't have a porta potty sitting out in the street that smelled like that for that period of time, you know, I had my turn, he has his turn, and I never said a word. Construction vehicles coming and going all day long for years until the job was completed. And the home is beautiful. I mean, it's different concept from my house, but it's a beautiful home owned by a public figure. In any case, this person, who you will see on the Oscars Sunday, that's all I'm going to tell you, after moving into his home, he proceeded to start doing various kinds of business out of his home. All legal businesses, I'm not trying to say that they were illegal in any way, but uh, it appeared that there were photo shoots going on in his home. And as a straight male, who's going to complain that suddenly all of these fashion models are parking their cars on my street and running around with portfolios and stiletto heels trying to get uphill? <laughs> Well, at first, this looked like fun. I'm saying to myself, oh, God bless America. Here I am living in the Hollywood Hills. And there's fashion models parked all over my street. This is great. But then things took a turn for the worse. Because eventually these photo shoots became larger and more elaborate. Trucks and other vehicles would arrive with equipment, Klieg lights, generators, I would get these surveys at my front door asking if I objected to a photo shoot happening across the street. And I never objected. I was okay with it for two reasons. One is I know the guy who lives in the house across the street. I know him. And the other reason is because I'm a member of the Screen Actors Guild. I'm a member of AFTRA. My studio is on the lot of one of the biggest movie studios in the entertainment industry. A lot of friends who are in the various labor unions. And so if they want to film a TV commercial over there, or if they want to do a photo shoot once in a while, it's okay. But as your genial host has told you, no good deed goes unpunished. And what has happened now is that... This residence has turned into a factory for photography and film production. Week in and week out, new permits are being issued or requested. Survey forms being sent to my front door asking if I have any objections. A couple of weeks ago, there was a film shoot. Eva Longoria came to film a TV commercial across the street from me. There was Eva Longoria. Arriving in a town car. Filming a TV commercial for a candy bar. But the productions have gotten more elaborate. Now you've got big trucks, generators blasting all this noise. Production assistants running around, cars taking up Every space on my street, and when I tell you, I live on a street the size of a, of a driveway in the Hollywood Hills. It is narrow. 
And suddenly, the neighborhood that I moved to for peace and quiet, the neighborhood I have loved for all these years, the place I I plan to die, frankly, just live there for the rest of my life, the street in which I invested $2 million of hard-earned money renovating my home, has now turned into nothing more than a a film production lot. During the recent writer's strike, there was more work going on across the street for me than there was right here at the movie studio where I work. And now, the last straw. I have just received notice that a production company is applying to do nine straight days of shooting from 6 a.m. until 1 a.m. That's 19 hours a day with nighttime filming and Klieg lights being used outside the house, generators, trucks, people, you name it. The city of Los Angeles is not like the city of New York. city of New York, if you've ever seen a movie filmed in New York, they've got some kind of city agency that issues film permits. But it's a city agency. Here in L.A., we have a, what is a, like a quasi-private company called Film L.A. Incorporated. I don't know if they get some kind of a franchise from the city or how this works. But trust me when I tell you, this is an agency that, as far as I can tell, has been rubber stamping any and all film permit requests, no matter how unreasonable they are. And may I add that on my street, another city agency has issued permits for something else. Two houses are being carved into a hill. A hillside is being carved out, and two houses are being constructed at the same time right next door to the house where all this filming is going on. So there are dumpsters and trucks and orange caution signs, and the road is blocked, and there's no parking spaces. And the city of L.A., they have this canned script when you call people, whether it's your city councilman's office, whether you call Film L.A., they feel your pain. They understand that you would be upset. They're very, very sorry. They'll do everything they can to work with me. They'll talk to the people involved. But it appears to me that getting a film permit is easy. Easy. And it doesn't matter what disruption you're causing the neighborhood. It doesn't matter how much of an inconvenience it is. It doesn't matter how many hours it runs. It appears to me that the... The permits are going to come fast and furious. They don't care if any one address is doing all this work. doesn't matter. The first thing they say to you is things like, well, we want to keep film production in Los Angeles. You understand. I mean, it's a vital part of our economy here, and I understand that. You want to do this once a season, spring, summer, winter, fall? Fine. How about, though, you wait until all the construction is cleared up? How about you look at what else is going on in the street? They don't care. They don't care. I've called my city councilman. I've called his neighborhood representative. I've talked to Film LA. I'm talking now to my attorneys. That's how far it's gone. And uh, I know that here in Southern California, many people have been more than inconvenienced by this kind of stuff, but the bottom line here is that I have tried to be a good neighbor, and I have tried to cooperate, and I have never brought this up on the air, and I've never said anything, and even now I'm not saying the names of any of the people involved. But I'm at my wit's end. I vote, I pay taxes, I participate, I'm involved with my neighborhood, I put my money where my mouth is, invested a lot of money redoing my home, and nobody could give a rat's ass about that. If they want to film a movie seven days a week, 365 days a year, the city of Los Angeles will tell me they feel my pain, and then they will rubber stamp more and more projects. And so I've decided that I'm at my wit's end, and I'm drawing a line in the sand. And now I'm going to take every legal option available to me. 
I just got into a pissing match on the phone with a location manager who accused me of being obnoxious, and I am obnoxious, of course, and who uh, went ahead and did things to me, like tried to blame me that, well, you know, they, we just had this writer's strike, and we, we lost all this business, and we need all the film production we can get, so that, like somehow it was my fault that the film production business is not getting back on its feet. It's like my fault. This has nothing to do with that. It's a big city. Why does all of the film production have to be done at one particular address in the Hollywood Hills? Can't you spread it out a little bit? Apparently not. So, I have put everybody on notice. I am going to have it out with a neighbor. I'm going to have it out with the city of Los Angeles. I'm going to have it out with the uh, quasi-governmental, quasi-private corporation called Film L.A., that rubber stamps the permits for these projects. And you're going to be reading about it. I'm not going to expose the radio station to liability. I'm not going to be going on the air and trashing anybody or slandering anybody here. But you'll be reading about this. And you're going to be hearing about it because I'll be holding press conferences. And I will be taking legal action. And I will be uh, sending out press releases to all of the news media. And uh, I am going to... Uh, I'm going to be the lightning rod because I know many people around Southern California have fought these film permits unsuccessfully over the years. And many of them live in neighborhoods that can better accommodate the traffic and the parking and the inconvenience and the noise than the neighborhood where I live, where the street is so narrow, two cars can barely pass in opposite directions without scraping. So uh, I'm going to be the lightning rod. Now, some of you may say, well, who cares about you? You live in the Hollywood Hills. This has nothing to do with the Hollywood Hills. It has nothing to do with money. It has to do with wanting to enjoy your home in peace. Already, the production company, uh, had uh, their, through their location manager, has offered. Here's, here was one of the offers I got today. Well, how would you and your girlfriend like to go stay at the Four Seasons for a couple of weeks while we film? Well, that's great. So I spent $2 million renovating my home, and now they're offering to give me a hotel room for nine days <laughs> so I can go stay somewhere else. How do I get some diamond earrings for your girlfriend? I heard that today. Do they even know if I have a girlfriend? Do they know who I am? No. That was some diamond earrings. <laughs> That's what I've heard. So I don't know what the question is. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know if I'll have an answer anytime soon, except to say this. My word is my bond. I do everything legally and on the up and up. And when I say I'm going to do something, I do it. And when I say I'm going to use every legal means necessary to draw a line of the sand and say I'm done, trust me when I tell you. Watch for my smiling face on the front page of your newspaper or on television, because I'm telling you, this is war. I am now fully engaged, and I am going for the gold. I am fully prepared for whatever reaction that I now get. John like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Tom, I just wanted to call up and just congratulate you on being the number one pick. It's the Tom Like It Show. <laughs> The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Al on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Aloha, Mr. Likas. Yes, sir. Aloha. I thank you for doing this. I think that it's not just a personal thing. It's something that we can all look forward to to see you standing up for your constitutional rights. I, uh, I'm assuring you right now that I've drawn the line in the sand. Oh, I can hear that, and I'm loving it. I think this is genius. I mean, how many times we got to roll over because somebody else needs to make a buck? You spent all that money to find your personal happiness, pursuit of happiness, and now they expect you to roll over? The city of Los Angeles rubber stamps these film permits. 
Oh, I get them in my neighborhood in Redondo, too. Every, yeah, well, there you go. I mean, every permit is rubber stamped. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you object or not. I got something today called a filming survey. Asking what my concerns were, and then it specifically said on there that they're not asking for my permission. My permission is not required. Anybody can film any time. And it doesn't matter how outrageous it is or how long it goes or how early it starts or how late it goes. The city of L.A. rubber stamps these permits. (laughs) But why are they going to waste the paper, kill the trees just to get your opinion? Because then they get, of course, then they've got the paper trail. And I think everybody just feels like beaten dogs or they're made to feel guilty. Ooh, we're going to lose film production to Vancouver if you don't sign. And so they do. I think some of these people also, uh, they accept the Knights of the Four Seasons or the Diamond Earrings or whatever other uh, inducements or enticements they're offered. Oh, agreed. I mean, and that's what's scary, too, is that, you know what, just throw money at them and they'll roll over and... We can do whatever you want anyway. You know, I work in a movie studio. If I wanted to live in a movie studio, I'd take a cottage over here. I wouldn't buy a house in the hills. I'd move here. Well, I appreciate that you've been the good neighbor, that you've been the stand-up guy. You've kind of let things go by the wayside, but you're right. Enough's enough. Nine straight business days of shooting is what they're proposing now. For 14 hours a day, is that what it was? 14 hours a day. No, no. Nine, no, correction. 19 hours a day. It's from 6 a.m. until 1 a.m. So they're going to run three shifts. There's going to be, and by the way, Klieg lights that will be flooding my living room. Oh, so you'll never see night. Uh, not in my living room. I won't know. Yeah, and how are you supposed to work? Uh, what do they care? Ah, see. But it's all my down. fault. It's all my, the writer's strike was my fault. The, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm keeping people from working in the film production business. It's all my fault. Now I'm being no, called. You, you have your own show. You're keeping people working. You're doing your end of the thing for the economy, right? Uh, yeah, you're damn straight I am. By the way, I employed, uh, when I spent $2 million, I employed uh, bricklayers, tile people, stucco people. I employed uh, plumbers, electricians. I employed plenty of people. Yeah, I'm in construction, so I know the whole drill. And now that my house is finished, I want to enjoy it. Right, and you can expect, like you said, you know, while he was building, you kind of ran with it. Now you got these other buildings going up, these new homes, that they're tearing away the... the how, how long did it take for them to tear out the hill to put those new houses in? Oh, it took forever. By the way, uh, one of these houses, a man almost died. He fell behind the house and was pinned back there uh, by falling uh, gravel and rocks and dirt. Had to be the jaws of life had to be called in. OSHA had to be called in. And, and the city of L.A. just goes merrily along approving anything anybody wants to do. The developers, had the, the, they've got the city in their back pocket. The film production companies have the city in their back pocket. That's what's going on. Well, it's just, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I can get into this whole tirade regarding Mark Twain in the 1860s versus 2008. Only the names change. Everything else is status quo. But, damn it, I'm glad you're doing this. I'm glad you're doing it for all of us. Maybe it'll inspire other people to finally put their feet down and say, enough, I'm done, no. Well, I'm telling you, uh, you know, we've got a mayor who, uh, you know, he's busy out stooping uh, reporters uh, from TV stations. <laughs> while uh, while he's out banging around, uh, they're just rubber stamping these permits. And they've just, they've stepped on the wrong person. Uh, apparently. And now, I, I want you to that. know there have been 16 projects since November across the street from me. This is the first time I've said word one about it. 16. 16. But this one is the worst. Nine days of filming. Nine days. Well, if somebody gets the uh, notion, and maybe I'll be the guy to go out there and help pick it or something, you know. You <laughs> should see. You street. should see the street I live on. It's the width of your driveway. Oh, I've been up there. I, I've, I've had friends that lived up in those hills, and I know you're right. I mean, you can ba- basically get a symbol down the street. I mean, my, my street should be a one-way street, but it's not. Well, you know, because of poor planning. But the city you know. of L.A. doesn't care. Well, it wasn't the Hollywood Hills, an old, uh, like, hunting lodge area where they used to go uh, uh, hunt deer? Back, it, back it's day? where Clark Gable had a Peter Tear to have an affair uh, when he was a big star. Yeah, but there were a lot smaller things. There were like these yes. hunting lodges. Yeah. Right, bungalows, yeah, vacation homes. People went up there to vacation. Yeah, yeah, from L.A., which is funny because 
what is it, 20 minutes away? Well, keep in mind, uh, you know, uh, way back in those days, L.A. was centered downtown. Right. And and the uh, uh, the hoity-toity part of town, as they would say, as the, like the equivalent of like Park Avenue in New York, was Wilshire Boulevard and like Alvarado. That was the center of town. That was the center of town with all those Art Deco apartment buildings, many of which are still there. Yeah. Yeah, and they're refurbing them, turning them into condos. Or Correct. The old gas That's right. So, so empty now. So when you get your on your horse and buggy, you'd, you'd ride up to the Hollywood Hills to stay for the weekend, and that's exactly what it was. Again, this the history of L.A. is lost on most people. Uh, people come here from all over the world, and they have no idea what it used to be like. Frankly, I came here from somewhere else, too. But I've been here 20 years, and I'm fascinated with it. And, and I, I've made this my adopted home, and I just can't believe that City Hall, and specifically the people who issue these film permits, apparently they get away with murder, and nobody says anything about it. Well, you're going to do it, and this is genius. That's right. All right, listen, let somebody else get their words in. Thanks for taking my call, bro. Thank you. John Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. John Likas. Like do you keep the guys no foreplay? Well, put it this way. I tell the guys, your main concern is getting what you came for. Oh, my goodness, Tom. This is horrible. This is not romantic. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for just tuning in. I am taking on two very powerful entities. The city of Los Angeles and the film industry. I've uh, drawn a line of the sand. This is Emily on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. Hi, Emily. I was just wondering, um, are you the only one complaining and bitching on the block? I, I have no idea. I have no idea, and I really don't care. Listen, it's not nine weeks... Nine stinking days. Nine, no, it's you two weeks. Right they want. No, you they don't. Like you no, you they don't. You. No, they you don't. And I have the right to do. I have the right to do what I want. And if, by the way, if I choose to play Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture while filming is going on, I have the right to do what I want, and I'm going to do what it takes. There you go. You can. What are you in the film industry, darling? There you go. Uh, she's one of them. Right there. Wait till they see I'm going to have a little jackhammering I need to do on uh, the days of filming. Got a little sandblasting. Talk to my contractor today. We got some work we got to do. Probably need to uh, trim some treetops. <laughs> we got a lot of work to do. And no doubt I'm going to want to entertain the workers with, uh, well, whatever music they like. It could be techno music. could be the 1812 Overture. Could be some Banda music. You know, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, as a service, my friend Pioline, uh, we could, uh, turn his show on there and, uh, play it on a loudspeaker the size of the, uh, PA system at Dodger Stadium. So everybody can hear Pioline. 1 800 5800 Tom, it's Abe on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? I'm okay. Let me let me tell you something. What, what's happening is you're being pimped out, and and I have a house in Malibu that I rent out to the studios. I have one in Simi Valley. It's a number two adult filming house in, in in California. And what the problem is is when a location manager calls you up, he isn't working uh, for the studio personally. They give him. Uh, they have a lot of location managers working for him. What they do is they tell him, go out and find me a studio, I mean a location to shoot. He gets paid a commission. If he can't talk you into it, he don't have any money to go home to that day. The writers have nothing to do with that. So he's really basically pimping you out. And by pimping you out, the more customers he can get, and if he's got a winner, like my house for a long time in Malibu was a winner for a while till the neighbors got on my case, so I finally bought a house in Simi Valley. Nobody bought her out there. The Simi Valley rates so for filming out there in the commissions like, eight hundred dollars a day in los angeles that's four hundred and some dollars and they let you do it for eight or ten days which is a better deal for the location manager to keep the budget down but if he can talk you into it and you don't say anything they'll keep quiet also 
If you consist on on your thing raising hell with these guys filming, they're going to come to you and they're going to offer you a lot of money to keep your mouth shut or do what my neighbor did used to do out here. He used to turn on his weed whacker when they're filming outside. That's the worst sound for a camera sound, a microphone to pick up. But when they turn that on, they have to say cut and they can't do no filming. And you cost them thousands of dollars an hour if you do that or have some sound coming from your house because those microphones are very sensitive. And the fact that they're going to keep you up all night, if you don't complain, they're going to continue doing it. But the Phil Commission, if you raise hell enough, you have to have everybody agreeing within so many feet. And that's part of the process of the permit when you take the permit out. Because I go about that all the time. And if they don't pay me a nice amount, I object to it. Just on the grounds, just so I can get more money out of it. Even if I'm on vacation, that's the best time to object to it. And that's what you got to do. you got to do your stand. Your neighbors have nothing to do with it. He's making a fortune. He's probably getting between thirty-five and $5,500 a day. And if they're doing 19-hour shift, that's not different shifts in the studio. That's the one shift that's being worked on right now. Those guys work 19 hours. They get overtime, triple time, and whatever time they want to get. Another crew doesn't come in and over there. And if that's a red flag day, if you're on the street with a red flag by the city of Los Angeles, they can't even park on your street. Love those energy drinks. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. It's Keith on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, uh, I was hoping to get on sooner to let you know that girl you had on there was a prime example of uh, why they should have uh, something else stuffed inside their mouth. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I love your show. She yeah, sounds yeah. like the uh, location uh, manager that I talked to earlier who called me obnoxious. Yeah. After offering me uh, nine nights at the Four Seasons Hotel in Beverly Hills, then she called me obnoxious when I, you know, refused to accept to start giving the reasons why I won't accept. Yeah, I heard that earlier. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty funny. Mm. Um, hey, uh, have you checked into the um, ordinance, or uh, maybe you can have your lawyers check into that? Because uh, usually, most, uh, especially in high class areas like where you live. Uh, they have ordinances for sound, uh, noise that doesn't pass a certain time at night or before a certain time in the morning. Um, the other thing is, and so, in other words, if they override that, which I'm really surprised if they do, uh, it would be basically the city violating their own, uh, their own laws. Uh, the other thing is, is that, um, you might want to also look into the uh, houses that are being built because usually there's some type of standard of, um, uh, they usually hand out some type of, um, uh, you know, like a sheet for people to sign off and agree that they don't have a problem with certain things that are going to be done uh, as to how the house is being built. Like, you know, it can go uh, so many stories or how high up they're taking it. Trust me I when mean, I tell you that the city of Los Angeles, uh, there are no rules anymore. Uh, the uh, you can uh, carve in any hillside. Uh, you can build as high as you want. Uh, they love to tell the Los Angeles Times that they're going to restrict all this stuff. But I'm living in the belly of the beast, and I'm telling you, no retaining wall is too high for the city of Los Angeles as long as you grease the skids. Yeah. Well, hey, good luck with it. Uh, I guess you're going to see what it's like to fight City Hall for real. And if you could take me out with a screaming orgasm and a fart. Here you go, Keeve. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. It's Greg on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How you doing? Great. Yeah, you know what? You're the perfect example why I'm going to vote for Obama. I'm the example of why you're going to vote for Obama. Yeah, because uh, you have uh, issues with, uh, you uh, bought a million dollar house. And you have issues. It has nothing to do with the price of the house. It has to do with the fact that it's a house. It's a million dollar house. It has nothing house. to do well, with the, the house that I'm complaining about is a four million dollar house. How about 15 years ago when you were working AM and you had a uh, two bedroom? Uh, were, you, were you a Democrat back then? I have never been a member of a political party. Yeah, I know. You say that. Uh, it's a fact. My question Prove is. Prove otherwise. You know, Can you? My question Can you prove otherwise? My question Can you prove otherwise? One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Lisa on the Tom Like his show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm great. You know, I shouldn't have even asked how you are because I'm as pissed off as you are. Um, unfortunately the filming industry has found my area, which is Ladera Heights. 
uh-huh. and they take over our streets. It's not so much the filming, but it's the production crew. When you're driving down the street where they're filming, they walk across the street. They look at you like you've lost your mind. Why are you driving down their street? They trample the grass. They have absolutely no respect for the other homeowners other than where they're filming. Mm -hmm. It is so annoying. And, I mean, literally, they look at you like, how dare you drive down your street when we're here? I have to believe that they they cannot be homeowners and treat people like that. They just can't be. I'm, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna find out where these people live, and I'm gonna get a film permit to film across the street from them. Thank you. I will join you no matter <laughs> what it is. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> now, if you just yeah, call time it. is four a.m. Everybody, four a.m. I'm there. I'm there with my barking dog. I'm there with whatever it takes. Barking dogs. That's a great idea. I've got friends with dogs. I've got a Dalmatian you can borrow. Little yippity yappity things that'll, that'll make all kinds of noise. It's great. I mean, you feel like you're held hostage in your own neighborhood. That's in exactly how I feel. So the and then, and then the, the gall of this woman I talked to today who tried using the recent writer's guilt strike and tried to lay a guilt trip on me like somehow I'm keeping I'm keeping people out of work by complaining about this. Like there isn't a whole big country where you could be filming this movie. She has never been an inconvenienced homeowner to call with a statement like that. Never, ever. Well, after she said that to me, I guarantee you there is no compromise. I will not compromise. I will not stop until this filming is is shut down or moved somewhere else. I won't. I'm behind you. I'm beside you. I'll be in front of you. Let me know where to go. Thank you, Lisa. Keep up the good work, Tom. Thank you for the call. Let's go to Antonio on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Antonio, father, yes, sir. I've been trying to get forever on your show, but you know what I'm glad I did today because I support what you're talking about. And listen, I live in Thousand Oaks, but if I have to drive to whatever you say for us to get together, we'll get together. And you know what? I know that if you call the 1-800 to Piolin, uh, the other host from the, the, other, the other radio station, oh, yeah. we, we can pull thousands of people behind you why because you are the man you are the model you know what whatever you say goes that's why we have thousands of people in the community and across the nation listen to you on the website because you are the man you have a point and you know what i'm a hundred percent you got my support I, and if you run for election i'm sure you can win and go to the go to the like the whiskey did <laughs> <laughs> Antonio, thank you. I uh, can't put that word on the air, but uh, I'm glad to know we're on the same boat. <laughs> See, you, you can say blow. That word's okay. And you can also say, for example, job. That's a word. You can, job is okay. But the word he said, you can't say. Whatever it was. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. You haven't heard the end of this.